I now have the distinct honor of introducing today's commencement speaker, Dr. Earl Miller, the Pickauer Professor of Neuroscience at Massachusetts Institute of Technology and a Kent State graduate of 1985 with a bachelor's degree in psychology. So think about that, students out there. This is, was his moment in time in 1985. Dr. Miller studies the neural basis of the high-level cognitive functions, including executive control. This is the high-order processing that comes into play when our behavior has to be guided by plans and thoughts and goals. His research is helping us to better understand dysfunctions and diseases, such as autism, schizophrenia, and attention deficit disorder. Dr. Miller is the recipient of many academic awards, including the Amar Bose Research Fellowship and the National Institute of Mental Health Merit Award. Dr. Miller lectures worldwide. He makes frequent media appearances and serves as editorial and editorial board member of major journals in neuroscience. He earned his PhD in psychology and neuroscience from Princeton University. Dr. Miller's important research and service has closely served to better our society through enhanced understanding of the most complex living structure in the known universe. We are delighted to welcome him home, to his Kent home, and you uh, will help me, I hope, to say, Dr. Miller, Kent State is always your home. Welcome home. Thank you so much, President Warren. I mean, it really does mean a lot for me to be here. I love Kent. Kent is where my life changed. You know, between you and me, I wasn't a very good student in high school. But Kent changed that. I suddenly had the freedom to choose what I wanted to learn, and Kent provided the smorgasbord. And what a smorgasbord. Much of what I learned about being a scientist, I learned here at Kent. Kent will always be near and dear to my heart. But I'm not here to tell you stories of inspiration. You don't need inspiration from me, your college graduates. Instead, I'm here to give you practical advice from the world of neuroscience. And that practical advice, in a single word, is focus. Or maybe to you, use today's buzzword, monotask. Don't try to multitask. You can't do it, even if you think you can, you can't. Your brain is not equipped to multitask. Multitasking ruins your productivity, it causes you to make mistakes, and it lowers the quality of your thoughts, making them more superficial, less creative, and less innovative. Now, your brain actually has a very limited capacity for simultaneous thought. We can only hold a very little bit of information in mind at any single moment. But your brain deludes you into thinking it can do more than it actually can. For, as a, for an example of this self-delusion, consider visual perception. Right now, you probably have this impression that your brain is like a video camera with a wide-angle lens. You pretty much see everything in front of you, right? Not true. You're actually sipping at the outside world through a straw. Your, only, your brain can only take information in, in little snippets. You don't notice this, but right now your eyes are darting around about three or, three or four times a second, constantly moving around, taking in the scene in front of you in little bits and pieces. Then your brain papers this over. It combines all those bits and pieces to give you the illusion of wide-angle, seamless perception. But as a result, you have the illusion that your mind can do more than it actually can, that it is wider than it really is. Because of this limited capacity, you don't really multitask when you try to multitask. Instead, you task switch. You switch back and forth between the tasks. And you don't really notice this task switching either, but it happens and it comes at a big cost. Your brain has to reconfigure as it switches between tasks. And every time there's a switch back to a task, your brain has to backtrack and figure out where it left off. This takes time and it causes errors. So instead of spending valuable brain processing time actually thinking, you spend a good portion of that time switching, backtracking, and fixing errors. This is just wasted time. But not only is that bad for productivity, it also decreases the quality of your thoughts. 
Where do deep thoughts, creativity, innovation come from? They come from following links between thoughts. This is how memory works. Memory is a big network of associations. Thinking of one thing leads to another, leads to another, and so on and so forth. Truly deep and creative thoughts come from following the garden path of this network to new and different places. When you try to multitask, you don't get as far down that garden path because you're constantly switching and backtracking. In short, multitasking is wasting time that could be spent allowing your thoughts to go to new and different places. And by the way, if you think you can pay attention to two things at the same time, studies show you can't. It's another of the brain's delusions. If all this time I've been talking, you've been concentrating on your cell phone, you haven't truly been processing what I've been saying. Like you've probably heard from friends, partners, parents, just because you can repeat what someone just said doesn't mean you were truly listening. Let me add here, if you're thinking, this just applies to other people. I'm really good at multitasking. You're wrong. Studies have shown that people who think they are really good at multitasking are actually the worst at it. <laughs> it's a big rationalization fest. People who multitask a lot do so because they can't resist the urge to multitask. Then they rationalize it by convincing themselves that they're really good at it. So now you may be wondering, if multitasking is so bad, why do we have the urge to do it? If multitasking is so bad for my brain, why does my brain want it so much? Well, it's because many, many years ago, when we first evolved our human brains, it was a very different environment. There was much less information available. And any new information might be critical to our survival. A rustling in the bush may mean a tiger is about to leap out. So it was adaptive for our brains to evolve to crave information, to find new information rewarding. Your brain likes new information. But also because the old environment wasn't rich in information, we also evolved the limitation that only allows our brains to focus on one thing at a time. You add those two things together, and you have a brain that is now ill-equipped to deal with our modern world where, where there's a flood of information. So what can you do? You have to plan to focus. When you need to focus, put away your mobile phone, put away your tablet, turn off those extra computer screens, shut down your email if you have to. Don't try to monotask by sheer willpower. It's too hard to fight the brain's thirst for new information. Prevent the urge by removing the temptation. As you all set off in your new lives, a word of advice. You'll have better success if you focus on one task at a time. Finally, even if you ignore everything else I said, please take this simple advice. Put away your cell phone when you drive. Your ability to pay attention to the road while you talk on the phone is another delusion. Studies have shown that talking on the phone causes drivers to miss as much as half the things on the road right in front of them. Half. And hands-free headsets don't help much. It's the cognitive demands of the conversation that's a distraction. Now before you ask, talking to somebody who's a passenger in the car is a completely different situation because they know when to shut up, right? Car accidents cause about 40,000 deaths per year in the U.S. alone. And it's estimated as many as half of the accidents are due to distracted driving. So even if you listen, don't listen to anything else I said today, please, please, please put away your cell phone when you drive. Because I think the world is a much better place with more, not fewer, Kent State graduates. Congratulations to you all. Oh, wow. How many of us have our cell phones out still? This is graduation. You have to focus. Dr. Miller, I thought that was an astounding explanation of your research over a lifetime. And thank you for sharing it with us. I think it will make a difference. I can guarantee you I'm going to go home and think about t multitasking in a different way. And I bet there'll be so many others who will. We want to thank you so very much for coming, and we have a gift for you uh, if you would come back to the podium. And I wanted to say to everyone as I show this, uh, as a Kent State graduate uh, and a member of our Alumni Association, we have what is called a Professional Achievement Award every year for the most outstanding Kent State alum. 
This year, that award uh, was awarded to Dr. Miller. So we wanted to wait until this moment to present the Professional Achievement Award to you. Thank Say you. congratulations. Thank you very much. We want to get a good picture here. You can see the camera?